we're gonna find you We'll never mind you We'll drag you home And then we'll all look and grind you Oh, you'll be hurting Behind the curtain Oh, let me tell you that our victory is certain We sing the undead cheer Around the Alright, everybody. Welcome to the Days of the Dead Monsters on Among Us panel. What made you guys decide to become monsters in the first place? What monster really inspired you? Or anybody with a costume? Well, actually, I was picked at the last Days of the Dead uh, to be part of Monsters Among Us. I dressed up as Barbara Steele's character from Nightmare Castle. Classic elements of horror is what I'm into, all of the originals. I like the elegance of it and the backstories behind a lot of films. Uh, and it's just, I, I don't know, the beauty of the macabre uh, around that time period from the 20s and 30s up to the 50s. I love that. I mean, it's just it's one of the most inspiring time periods of uh, Sorry. Uh, we got a lot of people yeah. on the panels. Well, I was, uh, since I do a lot of the, I guess, old school uh, makeup effects and everything, we can go to think about it, and Jack Pierce and all of the Universal Monsters and uh, yeah, everything. A lot of his own makeup work is inspired by Dick Uh With me, I grew up reading a lot, and it was just Stephen King and Clive Barker were the two biggest influences, and it just grew from there. Um, my mom told me that if you're scared of something, make sure you hit it head on. So I was terrified of Robert England, so Freddy Krueger was my first choice. And from that point on, I'm just grown, and I met some really cool people throughout the process, and we're a family, and we give each other ideas every day. I'd have to say that I agree with Trey with the whole thing of meeting other people to do it, definitely. But uh, I'm a classics guy myself. Um, starting with the black and whites all the way back with Phantom of the Opera, Hunchback. And for me, two years ago, meeting that man right there for the first time, I said, okay, I have an outlet that I need, and he does what I want to do. <laughs> so. You're probably going to get a lot of the uh, same thing about the classics here. They, they, you can't really have an appreciation for modern film if you can't appreciate the old film. Everything that led up to it, you know, everything's a building block. So they had to work within the framework, so they had, in many ways, they had a lot more challenges they had to, to surpass using black and white. So a lot of that film noir process came about just actually having to overcome the fact that they didn't have color to work with. And the same thing with the makeup, you know, they, they went through pancake makeup, Reese makeup, you know, and several different people, Jack Pierce and many people, uh, helped formulate those things for the universal systems. So for me, it's definitely, as you can tell, the classic uh, old school uh, black and whites and, and horror movies from that time, Lon Chaney, of course, and many of those people back in the day that, that were the actors actually were the artists themselves in many cases. And uh, we don't see that as much today. So that's something I've tried to strive to, to put into this character. So that's kind of my point on it. So I do not know where to start, except from when I was actually a baby. My parents would always allow me to watch the horror movies. It didn't start off with the generic Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, or Friday at 13. My first horror movie was the Kyoto Brothers film, Killer Clowns Matter Space. <laughs> and of course it took off from there where I started watching more horror movies from later on the Halloween movies, the Friday 13th Child's Play, that was another one. In case you didn't realize, I had freckles and red hair, so when I was going through elementary school, that was my nickname. For me, the Royal Grads for the Child's Play, so yeah. Um, so basically, it kind of progressed later on in earlier on to my uh, teenage years when I would go through Halloween adventures, Fear of Halloween, uh, picking up costumes, getting the mask, scaring my older sister, who was petrified of Michael Myers, still is. And I wanted to say I started my first haunted house when 10, 11, maybe perhaps. And since then, it went through. I still do the haunted house to this day, and I only started doing my convention scene last year where I presented my own character, Lester, and as I said. It's big time, but yeah, which by congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah.
we got to grow up. And you know what? Come three days ago, if you were to ask me if I was going to win, hell no, I would say I didn't think I was going to win with all the different costumes up here. And, but you know what? That's getting a little far off the question. But yeah, um, in case you didn't realize, this is my first panel, so uh, with everyone here. So I'm going to end After the this, it might be your last one. <laughs> I've always had a love for horror, especially zombie things, and I love the blood and gore. And, and like, like they said, I, I grew up with the Stephen King thing. He's always been my favorite. Um, my favorite horror movie is Night of the Living Dead, and so of course I chose Zombie as my character. And today you're seeing the psycho version of Diva. This is Psycho Diva, and I stumbled on a website for a horror convention bought tickets and then looked up on the internet at different conventions and stuff and seen people wearing costumes and stuff and so we decided to come in costume and my very first convention he did my costume and tried to zombie me up. I pretty much looked like a, a, a battered wife other than a zombie. <laughs> 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 I did. Just like this. So that's the story, right? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that's how I got into it, and zombies have always been my favorite. And, and uh, all gore during growing up, I've always been the kind of person that I'm the prissy girl who dresses up and stuff. But so a lot of my friends have always called me Diva, so I had the name Diva, and I was like, well, I need a zombie name. He's like, well, what about Diva the Dead? I'm like, perfect. <laughs> but then people started calling me a prom queen, so I had to put the princess on the front because I'm a princess, not a prom queen. So but that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I think for me, growing up, horror movies, watching them, I was a big fan of Halloween. Uh, my mom and dad was very supportive of me. They, they, they knew about this was my passion for what I like to do. Very supportive. Uh, 2001, I had the opportunity to be hired as the resident Freddy Krueger at the Haunted Trail of Horror <clears throat> in, in, in Kenton, Ohio. Uh, 13 years running. Um, I'm the resident Freddy out there, and you know, like me and Trey, man, we, we do our Freddy. We do it pretty good now. We do it so we well. We took it up. Not this year. Well, not well. We, we build off each other, and if there's yeah. a situation where there's only certain characters that certain people can do, and there's only so many horror characters if you're doing something based off of a movie. So if you're doing it, we don't try to step on each other's toes, pass it on. It's just a big man. Yeah, absolutely. And now we're a part of Monsters and Us, so my characters have branched out. I'm, I'm Dexter now. Uh, Hannibal Lecter. Um, yes, uh, well, I, I created my own character, character called the Nightmare of Demon. Um, and all these guys here are really supportive. Like with Larry, we, we touch base every once in a while with ideas, and and I'm just fortunate enough to be a part of this. This is this is how we roll. This is what we do. The man. The um, it's going to sound funny because I have teeth in right now. Are you normally you don't have teeth? <laughs> I'm not going to take them out because I fear that I'll screw something up. I grew up with horror, yes, not the black and white silent stuff like they were talking about. I was never a really big fan of the classics. I hate to say it, I'm just not. I grew up in the 70s, which, uh, you know, the era of the slasher. I like slashers, I like bloody movies, I like killers and serial killers. Um, I do like the classic killers, Wolfman and all that kind of stuff, but I like the modern renditions of them. Uh, I grew up with creature features, you know, things like that. My parents weren't really into horror, so I didn't, I didn't really watch a lot of horror with them. I kind of watched my own stuff as I grew up. I was always fascinated with old school type special effects though, so that's what I do now. I use whatever I can find. Um, I dig all the all the big slashers, Jason, my favorite of course. Uh, Michael Myers, Freddy, all you know, the list goes on. I do I do up to thirty different characters. And uh, it's, it's always been enjoyable for me. I, I love to escape reality and do something different with my life. I, I, I don't like going to work. I don't like paying bills. So for me, this is like another life that I choose to live. And I like this one much better. <laughs> so, 
when Adolfo asked me to do this, Monsters Among Us, to start this thing up, I was so excited about it. I mean, this is like a dream come true for me, especially to work with talent such as this. I got some of the best people in the world right behind me here, and I don't put don't put any anybody in the movies to shame with what they do. And uh, I'm just happy to be working with them and learning from them and scaring the hell out of people with them. Yeah. You know? So uh, as long as the Buffalo continues to have us, we're going to be uh, growing and growing and growing. And there's going to be a legion of freaking monsters eventually. Yeah. That's what, that's what we're we're going to take over. Yeah. The ones that are in here right now is what we're here to tell you guys. If you guys can step up and start doing this with us, we'd be happy to have you as family. So let's keep building this. After this question, if anyone has any questions, you'll just raise your hand and let me know, okay? Uh, you brought up uh, dressing up at a core convention, and you kind of fit in here, but uh, do you got, any of you guys have any stories uh, about being dressed up out in the public? <laughs> no, 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 I know this is going to sound a bit strange, but I had forgotten that I was made up and was walking behind a uh, police officer and he just happened to turn around and kind of almost draw his weapon on me. He was like, I could have fucking shot you. And I just want something to eat. And it's not in, you know, uh, in probably human flesh this time. It's just at the buffet right there. So. But that's a Probably the funniest story I've ever had uh, with uh, other people. It was almost an odd. Did you say yes. you wanted the, you just wanted something to eat? Yeah, I wasn't shot in the head, so. Okay. We also work at a haunt in uh, Huntsville called Disturbia. And there's a Kroger right next to Disturbia, and sometimes we go over there to get food. And we don't think about the fact that we're in, you know, we're in makeup. We're just, we do what we do. But the people, they're just they have weirded out, they think something's wrong, and a lot of the makeup I do is really subtle. So they'll literally think like, are those your eyes? Do you have those bruises on your face? What's wrong with your arms? You know, you get a lot of the, who's the psychopath that's walking around in here? You know, they stopped it, they just need to look across the street and know that we're in costume for what we're doing. But it's never been anything too extreme, just people always ask, what are you doing, where are you going, or what's what, what happened to you? Or they part like the way see Yeah. yeah. Uh, about the funniest story I've got is a couple years ago I was at another convention and I was in costume, it was a friend's birthday, he wanted to go to the strip club, so a bunch of us got together. <laughs> Imagine that! Yeah. So he was at the strip club and I had taken my costume off, left it out in the car, forgot I had my contacts in. So white contacts, black lights, they glow really well. <laughs> so I'm, all you see is these two white eyes kind of googling boobs. All over. <laughs> I go off to give the girl a dollar, she takes it off my nose with her boobs, and I come back to the table, my wife goes, when did you take your contact out? I was like, oh shit. And I had to run up, and my my left contact was stuck on this girl's boob, and I was like, oh, I need this back, please. And I went out of the car trying to sanitize it before I put it back in my car. And that's about the best story I've got. You win. Um, I've got stories for days, and usually it's a weird, hey, if you were a furry, would you do this with a mask on? And I'm not going to hear that, Jeff. Um, but more, more, yeah, more recently, um, Scarefest last year, I guess Obama was in town for at, in Kentucky, and they closed down a bridge for him to be in town. I didn't know. I had just walked out of the hotel. You have to cross the street for this convention. And um, about halfway there, and I'm dressed as Hunk from Resident Evil. I'm loaded up with an MP5 in my hand, and the screech from this cop car was unbearable. Cops out, gun drawn. I dropped everything. I almost was arrested. I had explained myself. They were in full force because Obama was in town. Long story short, I was almost shot myself. <laughs> with the military costumes, if anybody ever does costumes with guns and they look real, Use an orange tip. Because, yeah. yeah, it's happened to me too. 
people at a hotel across the street as I'm coming through the parking lots, called the police, and I got five cop cars just ready. Yeah. Use the orange tips. If you get to a hotel and they're fine with it, tape it up, cover it up, put a marker on it, put it back on later. But we suggest always watch your butts because everybody else doesn't understand how realistic we are. Yeah. Yeah. I would have to say, compared to everybody else, mine's been very mild. Mine's usually just leaving the haunt with makeup on and stopping at the grocery store or things like that to get the looks at night. So. Nothing quite as adventurous as possibly getting shot. <laughs> yeah, I know. The more I'm around these guys, the more directions I go in that I'm going, why did I do that? So, yeah. There you go. I guess I've been very lucky. Um, not being shot. Not being shot, you know, and not losing, you know, my eyeball on a boob. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Not, not that my the booze haven't caught my eye, but you know, it's it's a totally different situation. It, you got to see why, you know, make sure you you cover yourself because I mean, out of context, people get really freaked out by things, and, it, and when it's really you know the more subtle or just you know non uh, known character, you know, it's, if if you're running around with a, you know a hockey mask on, you look like Jason. You, so many people, it's, it's mainstream enough that you might not have as many people get really freaked out about it. They're not going to be comfortable around you, but uh, they're not going to freak out as bad because they'll say, oh, he's dressed as, you know, Jason or they're dressed as so-and-so. But when it's something like me, they don't know what it is. So I, I, I get the, the Red Sea situation a lot more than, than you know, probably a, a lot of the, the known characters would. Uh, probably the, the weirdest, you know, things, and it's just, you know, a mile things. It mostly... The strange things happen involving uh, cops uh, getting pulled over just because your tail lights out and they walk up and find you in the car. <laughs> yeah, it takes a couple of seconds to explain yourself and then actually just kind of you know come to terms. Like, okay, so your picture doesn't match your ID. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You, you, have, you lost, have you lost weight? Uh, yeah, you know. So just those kind of things, just sort of mild inconveniences, I guess, you know, I've had experience with, nothing, you know, major, so. <laughs> you know what, funny thing is, out of my 10 years of doing this kind of thing, I can't say, I can't think of a story at the top of my head to save me from wherever, but, um, like I said, as for the past few years, I've been trying to keep low key with my cosplay as Lester. Actually, people think that Lester is a whole different person because there are two different Facebook profiles, one for myself personally and one for Lester and Tyler. So when they see Lester, they think that's a real person. But you know what? Like I said, I'm really going to think of a story now because I can't think of one to save my, me for. But I think Diva has a, a very interesting story. By the end of Chicago, you'll have a story. <laughs> Uh, we'll make sure of that. Well, like Dr. Rin said, we work at a haunt, and it's always interesting the the drive to work, the looks that we get dressed as zombies. You know, you know, we'll see somebody all bloody driving around in a car. But um, my favorite story is actually I do photography, and I had gone, we had gone to Michigan to Larry Lutz's house, and I was doing a photo shoot of him. He was doing his Jason costume. And that's where I did my first Psycho Diva photo shoot. And the interesting part was on the way back from this photo shoot, I'm sitting in the front seat all bloody and I got my bloody baby hanging out the window and I'm sitting there, hi, out the window. And you could see people mouthing, what the fuck? <laughs> And um, we were driving, and there was this this guy standing outside of this business holding a sign to advertise the business. And when we're driving, and I'm watching him, he totally froze. He's like, and he just stood there until we couldn't see him anymore. It was funny. <laughs> Psycho drive. She's seen what was playing at the drive-in. It was Twilight. <laughs> Let's go to the drive-in. I want to see Twilight. That's great. I didn't work. I grew out of followers of the drive-in. We like to go to the drive-in. But, you know, there was nothing plain that I wanted to see. So I said, you know, I am going to entertain myself. <laughs> Somewhat. Famous so, life work. Yeah. <laughs> so I did like to do with Two-Face from Batman. I flipped the coin. I said, heads, Freddy Krueger goes to the drive-in, tails, you don't. <laughs> heads. 
So I get in my Freddy Krueger gear and I'm driving and I go up to the ticket window and you're fun, please. <laughs> Flip her out, and then we get we get parked, and we go and get our pizza and everything. So I'm I'm in character, and you know I'm going through all that. You know, it's still daylight, so I'm, I'm going around these cars and everything like this, and flipping kids out, and they're all crazy and everything like that. And I go into the concession stand and order my pizza and everything like that. And the uh, the drive the, the owner of the drive-in was so impressed that he found out that I also do Batman. So when the Dark Knight Rises comes out, he is going to hire me to do the opening, the midnight showing at the drive and then at the theater as well. Yeah. So, but yeah, I just that, I just love you know getting costume and just go do something nice for everybody else. Before we get into that, I believe uh, Liquid Beer today costume is actually a shiny vampire from uh, Twilight. Uh, uh, no, I'll buy the <laughs> cold day in hell. <laughs> Twilight sucks, people. Let's <laughs> remember this. Yeah. Sparkles and runs through the forest. Vampires are not pretty, and they're not nice, and they're not well dressed. Well, some of them are. They kill people, and that's what it's all about, you know. Um, I don't have a whole lot of funny stories. I got a lot of embarrassing stories, but they're more or less just involving changing with each other. And some of that stuff is a little uh, down low. <laughs> but yeah, I've had a lot of fun things happen. I've had cops pull up behind us while I'm changing in the back of the car. I've had, uh, I've changed in the back of the car a lot of times. I've had people give me funny looks at White Castle when I get home from uh, a haunt. But I used to work at an outdoor haunt, so I was Jason. Man, I didn't have the mask on, but I had all the shit from the neck down and all the makeup on my face. So I'm ordering White Castle fries. I get around there and they're like, okay. <laughs> I said I work nights, sorry. You know, I work a little rough. <laughs> but I don't have nothing really groundbreaking, you know, groundbreakingly funny. I will say, uh, when, they, when, when Trey was talking about Scarefest, picture this. Uh, I'm looking out the window from the top, one of the top floors of the Hilton, which you can see the crosswalk down below. So we're, we're sitting there looking out the window, and what do I see? I see Freddy by the, by the light changer, and behind him is a fucking baby. A six foot tall baby <laughs> jumping her oh sorry. Jumping around like this. And then Freddie's just standing there like this. And you don't really hear nothing, but just the visual alone. Chris. I got a picture of it. It was hilarious. That's the kind of shit that I love to do and that's why these are so fun. You don't get peripherals in some of your costumes, so I didn't realize that this baby was doing behind me. It kind of looked like Freddie was aggravated with the baby though, because the baby was like acting up. It just, it, it was just the funniest shit I've ever seen, you know? And we won't talk about how Arrow acts behind closed doors when he's changing in the costume. That's a whole other discussion. Yeah. Difficult costume for that. How many questions? All of them. Yeah. Most of mine are off the top of my head. Anyway, I can uh, never keep them, I guess you can say, because uh, once you take them off, they're just done. Um, I don't know, I'll build up makeup. Uh, say the most time I've ever spent on one would be about five and a half to six hours. And it was made up from head to toe. That was just to put it on or to create it? Just to, just to put it on. Oh, right. Wow. Out the window. I was barefoot, made my feet up, everything, my legs. Took a what long time. Uh, zombie. Oh. Everything for me is zombie oh, related. Right. Uh, um, same with uh, you know, Eva here. I guess we are the zombies of the group and everything, so it's quite, quite an honor. So I'm very happy to be a part of everything. These guys here won last year, <clears throat> in case you guys didn't know. Yeah. So I have the video. Yeah, we build up every year. We get new people. Look at Beard's costume contest. We bring everybody in. I'm sorry. Okay. We bring everybody in. We have a costume contest. If you guys win, you're part of the family. And if you don't, we still pay attention to you. So we do want you guys to start doing your costumes as much as possible. 
question. And I'll uh, just put a little two cents in about the costume because I know I've talked to Jeff a lot when I started doing stuff. And as far as doing the costumes, making the stuff, you never have a costume that's done. Yeah. Because when you're done messing with a costume, it's time to stop doing what you're doing because you've lost the interest. There's always things to perfect them. Every time I put a costume on here, there's always repairs. Yeah, you always have to do touch-ups after a show. But every time I put on a costume at any of the shows that we go to, I look at it and go, I don't like that, it's not right. I gotta go home and work on that. There's always something to fix and make it better. And always. The fans, everyone, you guys help us, you tell us ideas, you say you love this costume, you love this character, you should do this, you should try that. We do take that all into consideration. Well, we gotta handle that. Oh, that's Mostly for uh, Hannibal here. Um, <laughs> since you do such the most awesome friend voice, and every reason chill books every time I hear it, have you ever Thank met you. Robert? I've never met him before. You've never met him? Oh, man. Uh, and just, has the other Freddy have you ever met him? I, I've never met I've never met Robert Hingle. I've met Heather Lightingham and Mark Patton. But uh, I've never had the opportunity. I'm, I'm hoping one of these days I get a chance. Did you get a voice for Mark Patton? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's actually, there's a video that she videotaped from Atlanta. Uh, it was a line from that DJ or Jazzy Jeff, you know. Or no, it's, it actually it's from the movie. You know, we got a lot of work here. You, me and you, Jesse, and the souls. And he's he's a, he's a great guy. To meet and uh, he gave me good kudos on my performances, Freddie. But yeah, I, I, I so want to meet Robert England one of these days, and hopefully, maybe Days of the Dead can get him here sometime. That's a good question. How many of us have actually met our idols in the industry? I'm lucky enough to meet both, though. Yeah, I mean, most of us probably have, but there's probably always that one. Like, here's the one guest if we can meet in person and spend time with, who would it actually be? Well, I haven't met the outfit yet, but it's close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine's Stephen King. I mean, that, if that's who started it for me, I mean, I'd love to go for a ride in Christine and just oh, chill out with him. I mean, I know he's a metalhead like me, just crank up some anthrax on Christine and his screws. But I'll pass it over here. Chris, over here, tied to shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Mine would be uh, absolutely, uh, Dick Smith is uh, is turning 90 years old. Yeah. That's so long ago, and the man has been a major, major influence on my life. Uh, I know a lot of people that uh, do know him and everything, and I'm hoping that uh, one day I will be able to go out to uh, one of the conventions if he is a uh, guest at it, and uh, you know, shake his hand, but man, thank you for uh, all the inspiration and everything over the years. And, uh... For me, it's, I guess it's a little unfair. Um, there are a lot of actors and actresses who I admire, but not as much as the ones who have already passed, like Peter Cushing, Vincent Price, Barbara Steele. Um, I know Christopher Lee is still around, and he's 90. But it's very hard to get in contact with him. He's a very well-known actor. So, you know, I'm just, I'm happy meeting the people who appreciate the work that we do. If you guys know much about me, I DJ for a living. I work for a lot of bigger companies, so I've actually been very fortunate to meet a lot of the people that I try to represent and look like. Robert's a great guy. Unfortunately, I did not have a camera with me when I met him. Um, I guess now, have you guys seen Pennywise yesterday? I, I would love to meet Tim Curry. I mean, Tim Curry. Yeah. And I don't think he gets the, the justice that he should. He, he created a character that people are still to this day terrified from. And it's, you know, influenced by Stephen King. So. Oh, yeah. Mine would be Tim, Tim Curry. Stephen King would make a lion scary. Man. Yeah, he did. As far as anybody that's current, it's sort of hard for me to say because I'm sort of like Mara. I like a lot of the old classic stuff. So, Lon Chaney, yeah. Boris Karloff, Vincent Price. Is always been like wax. Uh, the, the House of Wax I watched thousands of times. But uh, more current people for me, what really did it in the 80s for me was was Robert. So I mean, I'm too big a guy to do Freddy, so I don't do a Freddy costume. So, uh, but Robert would probably be the biggest person I'd want to meet that's around right now, besides Dick, because he's a big inspiration for everything that all of us do. 
I have to go back to sort of what Mara was saying as well. Just see you know, a lot of, of my idols uh, are past now. Uh, but Dick Smith, I mean, he, he just turned 92, what, about three weeks ago? And uh, that would be a, a big one to me. Uh, of course, Rick Baker, he's kind of taken the, the lead from Dick. Uh, was instructed by Dick. He, he basically has kind of taken the flag now that Dick's kind of you know, gotten older and not, not able to do as much just physically. Uh, the man's still bright as a tack, I understand. But uh, Rick's really sort of taken the lead from Dick and, and with his uh, permission and uh, uh, admonishment uh, to just go forward. Uh, and probably, I guess, one of the other... Uh, I, I'm really inspired by actors today that much like ourselves, end up playing the monsters, or end up playing the, you know, not so uh, normal characters. And they usually don't get the credit that they do. Uh, I, was, I was lucky enough to meet uh, Doug Jones, and he's an incredibly nice guy, I mean, but he's such a brilliant actor. Uh, as a character actor, he, he has done, you know, face roles before, but most of his work is all done behind, you know, three layers of latex and, and you know, 15 pounds of foam rubber, you know, but he is still able to emote a true, you know, endearing character for whatever short amount of screen time he's got. Uh, so he was probably the luckiest one I was able to actually meet as far as uh, character actors. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. going to have to agree with both what Argo said and what Scott said. Any method actors that brought something from their own palette to create their own characters, from Tim Curry doing Pennywise to Bill Mosley doing Job Top, any method actor who pretty much made themselves or made that character the cult factor they are, even Robert England from the very first Nightmare on Elm Street and how he did Freddy from the side swagger to. The, even the choice of the fedora of how it so went against the wall for that figure and like I said, if it wasn't for any of the method actors, those characters would be a, would be least memorable, but inevitably they would be memorable, but what for what they did to their characters, we still know them to know them to the same, we even cosplay as them and Yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like I already said, my favorite is zombies, and my favorite zombie movie has always been Night of the Living Dead. And last year at our first Days of the Dead Con, um, we were right around the corner where the ATM machine is. The potted plant wasn't there. Nightmare wanted to go to the bathroom, so I decided I was going to hide where the potted plant is where it was empty. And I was going to scare him when he comes out because I do it to him multiple times a week, yeah. it's fun. <laughs> he had a heart attack. He fell through his pizza through the house one day, <laughs> coming out of the kitchen. <laughs> but um, um, I see black pants coming around the corner. I thought that it was him. I jump out. Rah! Russell Strainer. <laughs> so later during that weekend, Russell Strainer does the same thing to me. <laughs> And then um, we went to his table and he said every time, because he likes to say that line to me, because my actual name is Barbara. So, and he likes to say that classic line. But Russell Strainer has this thing, if you say the line, you have a quarter. So by the time the weekend was up, we brought a pile of quarters to him. And uh, he signed my poster that I confiscated from Nightmare Man. And I got to wear one of his Johnny gloves and take a picture. and. We got a video of him saying the line to me. That is priceless. I have met a lot of wonderful, wonderful actors and actresses, and I've only had one bad experience in a long time. Does that have anything to do with her head spinning on her shoulders? Yes, it does. Me uh, too. I just say real quick. Um, I'm trying to choke you. Um, Bill Hensman passed away. And he was like one of the other people I wanted, to, always wanted to meet, because he was the very first zombie you ever seen. And in honor of him, I did uh, 
the cemetery zombie costume for Atlanta for Days of the Dead. And you know, that's another person that I always wanted to meet. So, yeah. And other Marvel movies, so. Oh, um, I guess I got lucky. I got pretty much met everybody that's always been an idol to me, especially for every character I do. Um, Robert Englund, met him for a short time, real nice guy. I mean, you don't have a whole lot of time to talk to him, so I didn't really get to know him. Um, I'm lucky to make a lot of good friends in this, doing what I do. I met Richard Booker, Kane Hodder, I mean, I'm friends with all these people now, so it's, it's a dream come true. And I know a lot of these guys do costumes of people that are a little bigger in the industry, a little, little top, you know, on the higher list. So hopefully, you know, one of these days, Days of the Dead can get some of these folks in here and, uh, you know, some of these A-listers that we all want to meet, you know, and I'd love, I'd love to meet Tim Curry too, hell, yeah. it'd be awesome. I'd like to meet a lot of these, I'd like to meet Wesley Snipes for crying out loud. <laughs> there are movies. Get busted. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should old Days of the Jail, I think we'll be good. <laughs> But, you know, in terms of my characters, I've met everybody. I've met Wreck, Jonathan Wreck. He'll be at Scarefest. I'll see him in this. Um, I mean, the list goes on, but I'm sure as time goes by and I do more costumes, there'll be more people I'd like to meet, but I'm, I'm pretty content. I think in, in the last few years, I've, I've had a lot of fun. I've met a lot of cool people, especially these guys. No celebrity can top my friends right here. Well, like you said, uh, Days of the Dead, they're really making you guys part of the show. I think it's really cool. Uh, do you guys have any... Dog poop kicks ass. Yes, yes. I said a dog poop kicks ass. Yeah. It does indeed. Do you guys have any highlights from Days of the Dead? <laughs> from the three that you've attended? Winning this competition for the reasons I wanted. <clears throat> the classic elements of horror being recognized. Because... Uh, yeah, there's, there's a few modern ones, but I like, by modern, I mean like 60s uh, to sure. the 80s. I'm not a fan of the recent ones because of the direction they've taken, but the philosophy behind that is lengthy. But the reason I won this competition is because it, it, it made me have hope. <laughs> I had hope in the, in the industry. What people really want to see. It was refreshing to, to bring it back. I have to say, when I did my Barbara Steele makeup, uh, her character from Nightmare Castle, as simple as it was, it was still it was one of my first makeups with silicone, and uh, I, I was proud that I had done it myself, and I, I was recognized for this. It was a huge highlight, being able to meet all those people. Yeah. Well, mine would be uh, getting invited into the family at the same time as you. But that's, that's good to hear. Uh, the statute of limitations isn't up yet, so I can't talk about a lot of things that happens at Days of the Dead for a few more years. But if you check things on Facebook, you'll find them. Besides last night at the end, because I wasn't here, if you were, um, the after parties, the human centipedes, and the craziness with alcohol involved, and the fact that we. I, if I could go on and on and on, I would, but just meeting you guys and hanging out and the, the respect that you give us, that's. It's just bar none the best experience so we're doing this for you guys we really honestly are we're nothing but our fans it's just there it's a it's a huge i use the word over and over again but it's a huge family you guys are our family days of the dead treats us like true family and they give us the respect of being monsters for you guys i really don't know what else could be said I mean, it, there is i mean it's it's about family the only thing that i have to say and i said there's only one word if you want to talk about here after party, after party, yes, we enjoy what we do, but after party, the statue's in the hall. <laughs> I guess the highlights for me would be uh, the, just meeting the fans, the, the, the people who come to the conventions and, and getting feedback from all of you guys, knowing that, I mean, with me, the character's a completely original concept. It, it may be based and inspired by several billion different things. But getting some validation, knowing that you know what I'm doing is going in a direction that people enjoy, that yes. there is some legs to it, and that there's actually some longevity to the, the two Argos, 
So that's probably the biggest highlight for me for, for any reaction I did. Well, my highlight would actually be starting off from last year, to be, that being my first convention, meeting these two crazies for the first time over here. Where's your Hannibal? Where's your straight jacket at? There you go. <laughs> but um, yeah, after, after meeting these two, it's been a big highlight for that convention, meeting everyone on Facebook from DeAndre Laser, who does Nancy Thompson cosplay, to, as I said, meeting these two, Jeff looking here, being acquainted with DJ Trey and Big Larry, and then through that one whole year, then being big, then uh, being friends with Pez, and better friends with Larry, Scott, and seeing these two get married, that was another highlight. And then, yeah. ultimately, winning the costume contest, which Jeff looking here hosted, and, and you know, as I said, uh, being next to a pyramid head, I didn't think I would stand a chance of winning, but based on what Jeff said, with originality, mm -hmm. I am just blown away as of two days later, being part of the MAU, it's just astounding. I'm actually part of this rogues gallery of monsters. Mm -hmm. You can only go down. <laughs> My answer comes in two parts, and the first part is the fans. I would have never thought in a million years that I would have fans. And, <laughs> right? <laughs> Who's going to fan this, right? Anyway, Diva's debut convention, it wasn't Days of the Dead, but it was a convention. She goes there and she's debuted. And he's in the bathroom and I'm sitting in the hallway waiting on him. Now in my peripheral, I can see a little girl. She's four years old. She's pointing at mommy, looking at me. And she's like, look, mommy, there she is. This little girl came to the convention looking for me. I cried. I, I had free stuff in my bag. I've always got free stuff. You guys want stuff? Come to my table. I always have free stuff for my fans. The fans, I just respect you guys so much for giving me the attention. Because, you know, who am I, right? But my second big part of the story is our, when we went to Atlanta and we're sitting there in the Monsters Among Us room on Sunday morning, and in comes Melissa Cowan from The Walking Dead. She spent 45 to minutes to an hour and a half walking around to each one of us monsters talking to us, she brought her two little girls in, her boyfriend in, she took pictures with all of us and had a great time just getting to know all of us. And that I would never forget. A real actor, actress, came up and gave us the time of day. That was awesome. Well, one of the highlights of my convention experience is when I got a chance to Marry this lady right here. Yeah. Great. I contacted Adolfo and asked him if I could arrange the surprise proposal. He said that's fine. I was talking with him during the course of the months, and and I was talking to these guys and, and planning this all, and and I really appreciate Days of the Dead giving me the opportunity to do that and also to give us the opportunity to have this wedding here. You know, he said it's, you know, family. And I wanted to have my family at our wedding. You guys are here. Well, that's pretty much reiterating what they said. My highlight is pulling into the parking lot on Thursday. My non-highlight is leaving today. I don't like leaving. I don't like giving this. I don't like losing all my friends for until another weekend. I'd love to do this shit every damn weekend if I could. I'd also you'd have to spend a lot of money. <laughs> I need a new job too. Um, but no, I, I hate losing. I hate losing these times with my friends, and that's what it's all about for me. My fans, I hate saying fans. To me, they're friends that support the shit out of me. Yeah. You know, everybody is my friend when I come to this convention. I don't care who you are, unless you're a dick. 
<laughs> if you're dead, then you're not my friend. Well, Peter, let me answer his question. Yeah. Well, no, no. He's the only, well, okay, he's the only dick I'll, I'll accept. That didn't sound good either. I'm just stepping in all kinds of dog shit now, you know. Now, I, I, I love all of you all. I love everybody that comes to these shows and shows us support. I love anybody that gets into monsters and horror and um, and just stands by our side, you know? I mean, it's it, it brings a tear to your eye sometimes watching some of these, these people come and talk to you and see you. And uh, Adolfo, Rick, Bill, I love you guys. I mean, if you're in here, I can't see you. But you, uh, these guys are taking us in. They treat us like family, like Trey said. They give us the respect that no other show gives us. Well, give or take a couple. <laughs> Scarefest is one, and Dead, dead Winter. Um, Scarefest and Dead Winter work closely with Days of the Dead. They support each other. They don't have drama and bullshit politics like some of these other shows do. And that's why we give them 100%. We work our asses off, and they deserve it, and we sh we do the best we can for them. So I hope we can keep making things enjoyable for everybody. Thank you. Well, I'm Neil Jones from WithoutYourHead.com. Let's hear it for Monsters Among Us. Yeah. 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 Yeah.